Hi everyone, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I painted this fall wheelbarrow on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. You see me marking my ruler at the 2 inch mark because that is where I'm going to draw the um, horizontal line that divides the fence from the grass. So if you look at the painting, there's kind of a fence background and then we have some grass uh, where the wheelbarrow and pumpkins are situated on. So I marked the two inch mark and I'm going to use a T-square ruler to make that horizontal line. So these T-square rulers are really nice to use in paintings because you can lay it on the side of your canvas and make your lines nice and um, horizontal. And so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is paint the fence. Now I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush and on my palette I have neutral gray value five and the color titanium white. So I'm going to use both of those colors to paint the fence. I did dip my brush in the water first and pat it dry and I loaded it in the neutral gray value five. So we're just going to call that gray from now on. I loaded it into the gray and the corners in the white. So uh, the proportion of the white to gray is probably a little bit more gray than white, but you can kind of adjust that if you want more of a a lighter gray, you would use uh, more white. If you want more of a darker gray, you'd use more gray. I think I started out with more gray than white and then I kind of got to um, kind of an equal amount of white and gray. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm letting the gray and the white blend together to create this um, kind of the unmixed look. And uh, I do this in a lot of my paintings. So if this is not the first painting you've done of mine, you understand kind of what I'm doing here. But if, if this is the first painting you're doing of mine, basically um, it's just wet on wet blending. We want to have all the the two colors kind of blend together, but not all the way because if we kept um, stroking over it, having it turn to one solid color, it would all be gray. But we're trying to make a faux wood look here. And to create that sort of wood grain that's going vertical, we're just letting those colors kind of streak together and um, blend themselves on the canvas. Um, something else that may be happening is maybe your paint's not flowing as well. Um, I would recommend kind of um, dipping your brush in a little bit of water and kind of swirling it into the paint on your palette, then applying it to the canvas. Adding a little bit of water to your acrylic paint will help it to flow a little bit better. And um, you want to paint that entire area where the fence is. And you can paint under that line because we're going to paint over that area anyway. Or you can try to just get as close as possible to that line. But everything above that line needs to be that gray and white blend. And also you can paint on the sides of your canvas with the same color combination as well. So just make sure you're um, using that full width of the brush, stroking up and down. And we're not going sideways, left and right. We're doing long strokes up and down to create that um, faux gray wood fence look. So I'm speeding this video up slightly. I'm not painting this fast in real life, so take your time. Um, you can reload your colors if you need to. Um, if yours looks too dark and you wanted to add more white, you can go ahead and add more white in there and that white will make it light. It will lighten it up a little bit. But when you are done and you have it all filled up, we're going to go ahead and do the base layer of the grass. Um, so the grassy area was done with layers with the first layer a solid green color. I'm loading my palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Cadmium Yellow, Medium Hue, and Titanium White. So white, green, and yellow. And I'm going to use my three quarter inch wash brush to paint the entire bottom area with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent the green. So I'm going to take my brush and it's all cleaned off. Um, all that gray was cleaned off of it. I'm going to load it in the water, pat it dry, and grab the green. 
and I'm going to do left and right strokes this time. So in the fence we did up and down strokes, this time we're doing left and right. Um, this is just the first layer of grass. I'm not doing grass blades or texture and, or anything like that. I am just applying a solid layer of green paint to the bottom area. This is also your time to really define that area. So if you painted your gray under that line, you can take that green and just paint right over it and it'll be nice and defined in that area. So one coat doesn't have to be solid. Um, this Green is a little bit of a see-through color, so meaning I can still see kind of this, some of the canvas showing through, but that's okay. This is just um, the first layer that we're gonna do to the grass. And when you're done painting this, uh, we can't go in and do grass texture in there yet because that layer needs to dry. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, go ahead and do the panels on the fence, on the fence in the background. So I actually used my T-square ruler. It was super helpful for this step because we can lay it and we can get a nice vertical perpendicular um, line to that um, horizontal line. So I took my T-square and I loaded my palette with some Mars Black. And the brush I'm using is an angle brush. This is a quarter inch angle brush. So I'm going to load it in that black and I'm going to take my brush. So the pointy part of the brush um, is towards the top and I guess the lower part of the angle is towards the bottom. And I'm holding the brush on its side and I'm stroking down. And that is going to help you create your uh, nice vertical line for your fence post. Um, if your paint didn't last all the way down from the, just one load of the brush, I recommend adding a little bit of water to that black. Black tends to be really thick paint, but adding a teeny bit of water in it really helps that Mars black to flow a little bit better. So you want to load the, the paint right there on the, the tip of the brush on the tip of the bristles and I'm going to have my um, lines be about four fingers apart. Um, I didn't want to measure it, it to be, make it be perfect because I kind of wanted to go for that imperfect look because it's kind of a rustic gray fence in the background. So we're not going for perfection here. Um, but I did want my lines to be vertical, which is why I'm using the T-square. So another four fingers spaced apart and um, loading the brush for each of those vertical lines. And it kind of helps to kind of hold your canvas like I'm doing, so holding it up. I'm holding it up so I can get a good camera view, but it's, has, it's actually really helpful um, getting that line to um, paint along your ruler. So I'm going to do it again. And even if your line is not perfectly straight, that's fine. Mine was actually kind of a little bit wobbly. But like I said, we're not going for a perfect fence look. It's a rustic looking fence. So if you accidentally have stray marks of, from your um, paint, like right here, it kind of went astray right there at the top. That's okay. I liked that. If you wanted to get super detailed and paint like wood knots in it, um, you can. I did not because I thought it would look a little bit too busy um, if I did all that detail in the wood. So I wanted to kind of just simplify it with that, the color of the gray and the white that I already painted on and then doing those lines. That was enough to make it indicate that it is some kind of fence. And so this one is the final line that I'm gonna do. And then that's it for your fence posts. And so next we can go ahead and move on to the grass. Um, if that green layer is dry, if it's kind of wet, we can probably still work. It doesn't have to be dry all the way. Mine was a little bit wet, but it's it was still fine. So I'm actually going to use this angle brush for the grass. Um, I am going to um, mix on my palette a light green color. So I grabbed a chunk of white. 
a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green. We want to make a light yellow green color. Doesn't have to be exact, just a color that's lighter than the base color. So this base color was that solid hooker's green. We want a lighter color than that um, so that it'll stand out. And so these grass blades, I'm going to start in the back. Okay, so I'll hold my canvas this way so you can see how I'm holding the angle brush. It really helps to create those nice thin grass lines. And again, when you're holding the angle brush, you want the, the highest point of it to be, well, I'm my highest point of it, it's on the bottom for this one. And I'm stroking up. So I'm kind of releasing my pressure as I'm stroking up the brush. And it's helping those uh, little grass blades to be nice and small, um, thin and um, releasing the pressure of that brush. So when you kind of release the pressure as you go up with each stroke, your blade of the grass will get thinner. So when you first do the stroke, it's a little bit more pressure. And then when you stroke up, um, release the pressure on that you're holding on the brush a little bit and it gets to be a thinner stroke. So I just did this whole row of grass blades with this light yellow green color. And the angles of the grass blades are kind of going in all different directions. They're going diagonal to the right, to the left, and some may even be going vertical, overlapping each other. So what you see me doing here on my palette is mixing kind of a different shade of green. I wanted it to be slightly darker because these grass blades are not all the same shade of green. And so I'm gonna do another roll of grass blades um, lower in that green area. They're going to overlap the ones that I painted um, in the far back and they're going to be slightly darker. And so you see me grabbing a little bit more hooker's green in here to get it to be slightly darker. And I'm doing this second row of grass blades and it's okay when you go reload your brush if you grab more yellow green, if you grab a little bit more yellow, it's okay to have that um, color variation because not all of your grass blades have to be the same color. And so I'm doing this row and it's starting to get faster. It seems like this would take a long time, but it, it does, but then it gets really faster. Once you get the hang of the stroke and you just kind of do your grass blades and you don't even have to think too hard about it. So I'm on my third row now and this row actually has a lot more of that hooker's green. It's getting darker and darker as I work my way down. And these grass blades are a little bit more chunkier down here because they're kind of closer to the bottom. And the, with each row, as you work your way down, it's going to overlap the previous row that you did. And your row doesn't have to be perfect. So I kind of went all the way down on the left, and then I kind of got lazy and then go all the way down on the right yet. You don't have to make each uh, row of grass blades perfect. It's um, natural grass. We're not painting artificial turf or anything like that. Um, if you wanted to, I know we don't have brown on our palette, but if you wanted to add a little bit of brown into your grass blades, you can do that. So I'm gonna to continue to paint my grass blades until it's all filled up. Again, we're not going for perfection here. And remember that we have a lot more objects to paint in this painting. This is just the ground, and the, it's not really going to be the focus of the painting. It's not what um, we're gonna be looking at at the final results. So it, um, like I said, the grass does not have to be perfect. And then, so another thing that I did here was um, I went back and with that lighter color, and I, I added more lighter color in the bottom area and kind of all over too, because um, that hooker's green didn't really stand out against the base of it. So I wanted it to have some lighter blades of grass in there too. So I added a little bit more white into that mix on my palette and did a few grass blades of that um, lighter green in the bottom area and all over. This video is speeding up here slightly. So as always, if you need to press pause in order to catch up, go ahead and do that. 
So I went and added some more of that lighter color in the back too. So pretty much all over. Lots of layering, lots of color, and um, just have fun with it. And so when you are done with the grass, we actually need to wait for this to dry because this traceable would not be so fun to do if all that paint was wet. So wait for it to completely dry. Mine is dry in this part of the video. And you want to print your traceable out so that it, um, I believe this one's a two sheet traceable. So it's going to be printed on two sheets and taped together. Um, unless you're doing it on 8x10, then it, it's a one sheet. And you're going to lay it so that it pretty much is right there, center on the canvas. And with the sheet of graphite paper below. So you want to kind of um, lay it, you just, you just want to make sure your wheel is on the grass. Same with the pumpkins. The horizontal line that I have on the traceable, it doesn't necessarily have to line up with your horizontal line. Um, you just want to make sure your pumpkins are not going to be floating on the fence and neither is your wheel. So you want to trace over everything and just like that, magically, <laughs> um, your traceable will appear on the canvas. So um, the, the harder you press, the darker it will show up. So you want to press nice and firm and you want to make sure you're tracing it flat on the table. And there it is, all traced and ready to go. And so we're going to go ahead and start painting this wheelbarrow. And I have a, a new brush here. This is a number four round brush. And I have the color Mars Black. So this is, I really recommend doing this. Dip your brush in the water and kind of swirl it into that Mars Black just to get it to flow. Because Mars Black is so stubborn, it's thick, and it will not flow unless we add that teeny bit of water to it. And so we're going to paint the wheel, the circle. And flowy paint is a lot easier to use for these circles than... Um, paint that's not going to flow very well. So we're going to take our round brush and we're going to paint the outer part of the wheel. And depending on how you did your traceable, um, if you just did the one circle or if you made it kind of thick, um, mine, I painted it kind of thick. If you wanted an even thicker wheel, you could actually um, paint it so that circle is um, thicker. And you want to do the spokes of the wheel, um, the handle, of the wheelbarrow and then there's that um, the line that's kind of the base of it and then um, there is the, the part of the wheelbarrow that's kind of holding it up um, on the, the left side. So a tip I can give about these round brushes are if you load the paint right there on the tip of the brush you can get a smaller line versus if you're using kind of more of the bristles of the brush pressing harder you'll get a thicker line so if you want to vary the thickness and thinness in some areas like the spokes are really thin the handles kind of thick the wheel a little bit thick so you um, would kind of vary where you're putting the pressure on the brush and then this area, I painted it to um, make it go behind the pumpkin. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some white to my brush and I'm going to blend it into a gray on my palette. I suppose you can use that gray that we already have on hand. Um, but I'm going to add some color variation to my wheel on the upper left part. So just a streak of gray. I'm going to add a streak of gray to the top of the handle and a little bit on the base of it and some of the spokes. So if your black is not dry all the way and it's kind of blending with it, that's okay. Um, the point is to just give it some variation in color. Maybe it's a highlight, maybe that's where the light is hitting. Um, it just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. And just gonna add a little bit more over on the spokes as well. I'm going to freshen up my palette with a little bit of titanium white. Add that just to the tip of my brush and then I can get um, some of that white sort of glare on the spokes. And then if it's too much, you can always go back with the black. 
Okay, so we're done with that step. And the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to paint the actual wheelbarrow. And I used this color. This is turquoise blue from Liquidex Basics. Um, it's one of their newer colors. They came up, came out with a whole bunch of new colors recently. If you don't have turquoise blue, you can use any sort of dark teal or aqua or um, any color actually, whatever color you wanna customize your wheelbarrow with. Um, so I'm actually going to use my three quarter flat and my round brush for this. Basically that shape of the wheelbarrow, we're just painting that in a solid color of the turquoise. Um, when I originally designed this painting, I thought about doing a red wheelbarrow. Um, but for some reason, when I did the, the painting, um, I decided to do turquoise. I thought the turquoise looked really nice with the gray. And so um, if you wanted to do red, you could do red or pretty much any color. Yellow would be kind of pretty, um, maybe a dark green or a brown. So um, any color would work for this. And so I'm just painting that in solid and I'm gonna try not to paint over that black line that I did. You can use the round brush to get into the smaller area, but for the most part, I use that three quarter wash brush to fill that all in. We want to leave it wet because we're going to add um, some white into it, some wet on wet blending. So what we're going to do next is on your palette, we're going to mix a little bit of white with the turquoise. So it's going to create a lighter turquoise color. You don't have to blend it all the way. Um, in fact, it looks a little bit prettier when you don't blend it all the way. And then, so on the right part of the wheelbarrow, I'm going to kind of do this curvy thing to begin with. And this is the three quarter wash brush. So your strokes are going to be very thick. And then I'm going to kind of flip flop my brush. I'm going to add a little bit more white in there because I like that white. And I'm gonna kind of just flip flop my brush in this area. So start on the right part, um, outline that area right there so it's lighter on the far right. But in the middle part, I'm gonna flip flop it like that to create some expressive strokes in there. It gives um, the wheelbarrow a more interesting color to look at. And so that's it, just a few strokes in there. Um, if I overdid it, it would have turned all solid light turquoise and I didn't really want that. I just wanted a few strokes in there and that's it. So some texture on the wheelbarrow. Maybe it's kind of a rustic teal wheelbarrow. And then, so that's the wheelbarrow part of this painting. And so we're gonna rinse our brush off and we're gonna go on to the pumpkins. So, I used three colors for these pumpkins. I did cat orange hue, uh, I did titanium white, and I did cad yellow medium hue. So white, orange, and yellow. I'm gonna take my round brush and load it in the orange, the white, and the yellow to make a light orangish yellow color. And I'm going to start with any of the pumpkins. So it doesn't matter what pumpkin. I'm going to start with the far left pumpkin. So when I paint pumpkins, I do one bump at a time. Typically, I start in, with the middle bump and I paint that kind of oval shape that forms the middle bump. Then we have the bump next to it. And to make that bump stand out, we got to paint it kind of a different color. So I added a little bit more white to my brush and I painted it. So when I do the bumps, I start from the top and I stroke down to create that shape. And so it's a little bit challenging because these pumpkins are smaller and I've done a whole bunch of bigger pumpkins, but the smaller pumpkins for some reason are a little bit trickier because they're smaller. Um, we don't, we only have a little bit of a space to work with, but um, basically each of those pump, 
bumps is kind of a different shade. Um, if you want to do a pattern of light, dark, light, dark, you can. But if you want to make it look more natural, then have your colors vary only slightly. And then you can go back in there and stroke some different um, strokes in there like that. And so I was having some coverage issues with these pumpkins because you can see some of that grass and fence showing right through all that orange and yellow and white paint. Um, if I were to redo this painting, I would have painted all my pumpkins white first, let the white dry, and then do the pumpkins. And there would be no coverage issues because titanium white is so opaque. Once it dries, um, you can paint over it and you won't be able to see any of the grass through it. So um, that's a suggestion if you want to do it that way. If you're having the same coverage issues like me, you can do that. Um, but I'm doing kind of the same thing with this tall pumpkin over here. But for it to stand out, I added a little bit more orange this time. Um, so it is uh, slightly different from the one next to it. So I did the same technique of the orange. Um, stroking from the top to the bottom, each of the bumps. And so you can really see that, that green showing through right there. So uh, at this point, a way around it is just to let that dry and then going back and add a second or a third coat and making sure that titanium white is in there because that white is going to make that orange color really opaque. So I'm going to do the same thing to the pumpkins up here. And it didn't really have the same coverage issue because the background behind those pumpkins was light. Um, besides the fact that we had that black line going through the pumpkin on the left. So I had to add a little bit more white in that area where that line is. But anyway, so I did the same technique to these pumpkins. Um, this one was a little bit more orange. And so doing one bump at a time, starting from the top and stroking down. And it's okay if you accidentally overlap some of that turquoise. Um, we still have a black line on that wheelbarrow we're going to paint after we do the pumpkins. And so um, stroking from the top to the bottom, um, you can add a little bit more white in there if you want it to pop a little bit better. So just by adding that little bit of extra white to my brush allowed that orange to be a little bit lighter. And then we can do the next pumpkin. And this one over here on the left, I added a little bit more yellow to the orange. And so same thing, start with the bump in the middle and then slightly vary the next color and do the next bump and again stroking from the top to the bottom so that's that line i was talking about um, definitely you can see right through it so i added some titanium white in there and the white really helps with the coverage because it's such an opaque color. and But I still had to go in there and add a few coats of paint to that area. And then over here, a little bit more orange. And of course we have that line still showing through. So like I said earlier, if you um, are noticing these coverage issues, you could just paint all the pumpkins white first, wait for that white to dry, and then uh, do your orange and you shouldn't have any issues with that. I'm going to go in and add a second coat to all my pumpkins and that helps to um, give it a little bit better coverage. So that's what I'm doing here. Just going over each of my pumpkins with the second stroke, trying to get the same color, but it was ended up being slightly different, but that's okay. So in these pumpkins up here, I added a lighter color, hoping to get that coverage to cover that black line. It's not no noticeable in the end. And just a few pops of lighter color in there help the pumpkin to pop a little bit. So, moving on, 
we're going to do the stems next. And the stems were done with burnt umber. I'm going to use that number four round brush and I'm just going to paint those stems in. So they're already drawn in from that handy traceable and I'm just painting them in a solid brown. Um, this is kind of a thin area. If you need to switch to that 10-0 spotter brush, that really tiny detail brush, you can use that for the stems if you feel more comfortable using the smaller brush. But I'm using that the four round brush and all of these stems are nice and twisted. And the, the base of the stem is actually lower on the pumpkin and not like right at on top. So it kind of dips down in the pumpkin and it goes in a spiral. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some lines on these pumpkins. So I'm going to twist my brush in that brown to get that paint right there at the tip of my brush. I'm going to start at the stem and I'm going to stroke down. And as I stroke down, I'm going to release pressure so it sort of fades away. So the line sort of starts out kind of solid and it kind of wisps away. So right there at the stem and stroke down. And that uh, dark line is helping to define the pumpkin bump lines. If you don't like that look with the brown, you don't have to do that. If you like the pumpkins the way they are, if you don't want to add that extra little detail on them, that's fine. And so I'm not stroking all the way down. I'm just kind of stroking maybe halfway down and the stroke kind of fades away as it goes down. I'm going to add um, a little bit more line to this pumpkin down here. And if you mess up um, or if your brown line is too thick, you can always grab some orange and paint over it or wait for it to dry and then um, paint over it. Mine got a little bit smudgy right there so I just grabbed a little bit of white and the orange and just kind of painted it over it. So the next thing I'm going to do is paint the vine that is on one of these pumpkins and this brown is going to um, turn into a green vine so this hooker's green hue permanent. So I'm going to paint a curly vine um, and with that round brush, I'm also going to do a leaf on the vine as well using the round brush. So I'll just kind of draw the outer edge of the leaf, the shape, and then fill it in solid with the green. The next thing I'm going to do is paint a black line. So we have this line on our wheelbarrow that's kind of at the top edge of it. And it's going to help you define that area, especially if you accidentally painted some orange over that turquoise. So just with your round brush and black, just paint a nice solid line right there at the top. And so you um, have that sort of border of the wheelbarrow. And then with your black, you can go ahead and paint your crow in. So this is just the Mars black and I'm using my four round brush and I'm painting that shape in. I will be switching to a smaller brush here in just a few seconds because we have a kind of a lot of details on this bird. We have this beak and his um, legs. So um, the four round brush is a little bit too thick for that. So this is a 10-0 round brush and I'll do um, his feet with that as well as his beak. And it's okay if it's not perfect, it's kind of um, a detailed area, but you don't have to make it perfect in that area. And so I did his beak and you can go in and just kind of define the shape and then later on, after this black dries, we'll use white to do his eye and a little bit of a highlighting in that area. The next thing we're going to do is the sunflowers. And I painted the petals of these flowers first. I mixed the yellow and white together to make a lighter yellow. 
And also that white is going to allow our petals to be opaque and not have so many coverage issues, even though I still had some coverage issues and had to go back with a second coat. But basically with my four round brush and that white and yellow combo, I painted all of the petals. So you can decide if you want your petals to overlap the pumpkin or if you want the petals to go behind the pumpkin, you can kind of make that choice. Um, I think I ended up making all of mine overlap um, the pumpkins or maybe um, partially over this one over on the right was kind of behind the pumpkin, but the one on the left was completely overlapping. Um, for the center part of the sunflower, you want to mix a little bit of black in your brown so it turns into a very, very dark brown and you want to paint the circle. And if you want to make your sunflower center bigger than what the traceable um, had, um, you can do that. So the dark color will paint over that yellow very easily. You can make that center part bigger. And then before that even dries, I went and added texture on it. So I loaded titanium white on the number four round brush and I just did dots, little stippling dots right there in the middle to create that texture inside of the sunflower. The next thing we're gonna do is paint this hay sort of decoration thing going on on the right. And on my palette, I have white and yellow and a little bit of brown to make kind of a off sort of yellow color with a little bit of brown and I'm just going to use that color to paint the shape first. So uh, on my palette I did not mix those colors all the way so it's kind of streaky with a streak of brown and white and yellow and as I paint that it's going to create that um, sort of streaky look. And so on this top area I'm going to stroke from the bottom and I'm going to stroke up and it's going to kind of wisp and fade away and get dry and it's going to create that texture of that hay. And then I can grab a little bit more brown on my brush and go in there and add some more texture in there. The brown is sort of blending with that yellow wet on wet blending. A little bit of brown on my brush there, stroking upwards to create that texture. And it's just really dry. I didn't really add any water to my brush or I'm not adding water to get the paint to flow. So it's pretty dry and not so flowy. And then I could add like different variations of brown and yellow in there and paint that little brown um, sort of tie that's going on there. Then I went ahead and I did some hay on the barrel too. Now my um, traceable, I didn't mention that there's little berries on my traceable in this video. And I took that out because I decided I didn't want berries in my truck. I wanted hay instead. Um, so I'm erasing those little circles right now and that's why. If you wanted berries, if you kind of like that idea, you can do that. Um, but I'm going to do hay instead. And so I'm basically going to do the same technique of the, the hay. So with that yellow, and of course there's like a lot of brown on my brush now, but that's okay. So grabbing that yellow and I'm going to paint the hay that's kind of sticking out of the barrel over here. So same technique, starting from the base of it and stroking outwards, kind of releasing pressure on your brush to get it to be kind of um, fading away to create that texture of the hay and it's sticking out in the back. There's a little bit in the back behind one of the sunflowers. And then there's some, there's going to be some more hay kind of in on the right side of the barrel as well. So over here, it's kind of sticking out over the edge. What I'm going to do next is add a second coat to my sunflower petals um, with just the cad uh, yellow with no white, um, just to brighten them up a little bit. So that's what I'm doing with just the yellow and the number four round brush, adding a second coat to my petals. And over here on this one as well. Then we're going to do something else to the grass. So um, freshen up your palette with some of that Hoker's Green hue. 
And um, I just did this with the round brush, but you can go back with your angle brush if you really liked that brush for the grass. But I just want some of my grass blades to overlap some of the pumpkins and the wheel in the hay barrel to look like it's really um, nestled in that grass area. If you want to add a little bit more shadowing to it, you can grab some um, burnt umber and mix it with that hooker's green hue and that's what I did here and just added a few more strokes of that grass kind of in the area under the wheel and the pumpkins uh, it'll give it a little bit of a shadowing effect um, but nothing too detailed in that area um, I'm going to add some white to my paintings white little pops of lines just to get um, things to pop a little bit because there's a lot of orange and yellow kind of meshing together and so I'm just going to take titanium white on my round brush and I'm going to do some strokes on my pumpkin bumps I'm going to do some strokes on the hay um, I'm going to do strokes on the petals of the sunflowers and on the wheel. So just random areas of white, um, just to get some color variation in there so it doesn't all look um, entirely flat. That's what I'm doing. And it really looks nice when you do the line, the white lines right on the sunflower petals. It kind of really helps those um, petals on the flower pop a little bit better. And you can add a little bit of white um, on the handle area, on the stems of your pumpkin, and on the bird. So this looks uh, really good on the bird. So you do the little eye on the bird, grab your round brush because it's a super detailed area, do a line right there on the top of the beak, a line on his belly area, a few lines on the tail as well. And then um, now that we have this little round brush in our hand, I'm just gonna kind of have fun and maybe add a few lighter strokes of grass blades in there. There's one final thing I wanna do that, to this painting and I almost forgot to add them was the, um, the leaves from the sunflowers. So I'm just gonna take my round brush and the hooker's green and I'm just gonna paint a leaf shape and paint it in solid so the leaf is going to a, a very nice point and just two leaves just the hooker's green nothing fancy or anything like that and that is it this painting tutorial of how to paint a fall wheelbarrow is coming to its conclusion i'm gonna sign my name over here on the left side of the hay and that's it uh, thanks for watching and painting with me.